No one else is willing to put these leaks out, but InfoWars and Drudge and uh, folks like the Northeast Intelligence Network. Now, he's going to be with us if he can 20 minutes in the, uh, in, into the next hour. And then our reporters are coming on from Milwaukee. Doug Hagman, I've been hearing him for 15 years on the radio. And, and I had him on seven, eight years ago. And, I, and he was talking about how Obama's going to try to have a race war. They try to overthrow the country and they recruit all this division. And they hadn't really kicked all this off yet. And I was like, really, Hagman? But, you know, the guy had good credentials. And a lot of folks I respect said he was a good source. And so uh, he runs a large, you know, police and uh, you know, a training facility, training with dogs, you name it. Works with the FBI, works with a lot of police departments. So, he, you know, he's a good source. We started getting him on. And more and more, everything he's talked about has come true. Not just because of his own research, but his sources. And we're going to go over... The information we've gotten, Joe Biggs is going to be popping in later in the interview with more info he got from this conduit. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. And then I'm going to talk to him about how he thinks this whole plan is going. How's it going for Soros when we know that intelligence agencies, private corporations, and other groups are now hacking the Democratic Party, the entire Democratic Party, the entire Soros operation, the Clintons. It's all going to get data dumped. And, and I've been contacted now to confirm. Earlier stuff was the Russians, the carbon taxes being exposed, the hide the decline, climate gate stuff, that is the Russians. And the Russians are actively penetrating stuff. But this is not the Russians, that this is U.S. intelligence agencies leaking right now, risking their lives. Because they know something we don't know about Hillary that's so bad, it's finally turned the basically the whole government against them. And, and we're getting word of what that is. Hillary Clinton is a communist Chinese agent. She is on the payroll of the Saudis. We already know that. But that they have engaged in treason never before seen. There, this is just such a dangerous time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody can feel it. You can see it. And the good news is there are so many leaks coming out from different angles in places they can't get everybody. They can shoot this DNC computer expert four times in the back who reportedly is the source of WikiLeaks. They can kill other people, but they can't kill everybody. And guess what? Folks are past being intimidated. The leaks are accelerating as the murders take place. So I don't know how they're going to try to handle this. A false flag, a staged attack on Hillary. That's the word we're hearing. Uh, but Doug Hagman of Hagman and Hagman.com, thank you so much for joining us today. I've uh, thrown out a lot of points there. Uh, where should we start? Wow. Uh, thanks, Alex. Uh, listening to you, I, you're 100% accurate with what you're saying. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think really it's important for me to point out that my sources are independent of your sources. And the information that, that I'm getting is certainly lining up with what you're getting. So it's it's really interesting. Hillary Clinton is an, as well as the, the DNC right now. Uh, they're in a duck or bleed type scenario. You've got uh, everything coming out where it's the, the globalists are, are actually being exposed. Uh, they, they've had plans, of course, many plans, and their plans have gone awry because of the leaks, the exposures, the, the unintended consequences from the criminality behind the Clinton Foundation. So all of this together uh, presents a, a duck or bleed scenario for the globalists. Is it fair to say this, and I'm going to give you the floor, but I'm just so excited, that, that we're seeing good people in government and other areas stand up we're actually seeing the good guys fight back, the good you know, men and women stand up and take action. Because what I saw at the DNC was unbelievable. I mean, the police were like 80% awake and, and were my listeners, and I'm just one guy, and the Secret Service was totally awake. It was incredible. That's got to scare the New World Order. That's got to let them know their plans are going to hell. Go ahead. Well, no, you're right. And I think the there's a lot of acrimony right now. I just spoke... Uh, uh, a couple of days ago, well, over the weekend, with with the source I've got within D, uh, once removed from DHS, and then one one inside the FBI. There's a lot of acrimony within the FBI because of uh, Clinton, Bill Clinton's thrashing uh, of the FBI over his wife Hillary and the Clinton Foundation. So that's amazing uh, arrogance to say the FBI director is full of BS. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so what we're seeing here, I think, is this pushback by the the good people within the FBI to declare their name and say, wait a minute, we didn't sign up for this. And, and we certainly didn't um, didn't agree necessarily with the 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 findings and letting letting off Hillary Clinton from uh, pursuing criminal charges. So all of this combined right now 
has got them on a, a track of retreat. And part of their retreat, I think, we're going to see an October surprise. And this is the latest information I received. And that October surprise kind of lines up with what you're saying uh, about the disposition of Hillary Diane Rodham, the witch Clinton, I call her. Uh, perhaps we might not see her on the ticket in November. If, if, if not, we, where's she going to go? Well, perhaps because of her illness. Um, well, this is being talked about by my sources and apparently by yours. So, uh, you know, these secret meetings with, with Soros and uh, uh, Tim Kaine, Soros and others, other globalists meeting behind closed doors, going to plan B. Now, at the epicenter of this, and I'll just, I'll say this and I'll be quiet, but at, at the epicenter of no, this. No, 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 please. In fact, I'm going to skip this break. Last one of the day. Go ahead. <clears throat> I, I truly believe what we're seeing here with the riots, with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, the, the, or is orchestrated riots in, in Wisconsin and elsewhere uh, by Black Lives Matter and by other groups, uh, by communist groups, we're seeing at the epicenter of this the, uh, the attempt to hide the criminality of the Clintons as well as the attempt to hide or perhaps even cause a reason to um, explain away the economic disaster that's about to fall us. And, and we know... We, we, my, my source this past weekend, both of them said, think bigger than, than domestically. Look at the global situation and factor that into what you see taking place domestically. And we're seeing the pushback from the uh, U.S. dollar in the uh, petrodollar, that is. We're seeing, we're seeing that uh, being put aside. We're seeing Turkey switching sides to go over, over with Russia. We're seeing ISIS now, uh, an American CIA-funded cabal ISIS that is actually, uh, uh, again, you know, we are, we are, funding the wrong side of that, of course, and finding ourselves on the other side of Russia. We're seeing a, sw a dynamic switch of power in the Middle East, as well as the Silk Road uh, caucus. Uh, so when you have Hillary and Obama combined, have been purposely destroying American power. Yes. In Soros' own words, uh, to, to, to bring in globalism, but instead all it's doing is discrediting globalism. Well, right, and I think that's the un unintended consequence of, of what uh, what their policies have been. But you know, again, I believe at the heart of this is the uh, the Keynesian economics, uh, the destruction of the U.S. petrodollar, and the covering up of the the calamity that that, that will cause. And, and that's the, the riots, the, the uh, racial division. And I spoke about this. All we've got is the fiat dollar and the petrodollar. We lose that. I mean, our industry's gone. Our farming's gone. <laughs> uh, no foreign army could do this to us. This is this no. is devastating. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you, this is better, more effective than than a foreign invasion. But we're seeing the foreign invasion. And that's what Trump's us. saying. He's saying these economic policies amount to war. Right, and and, and he's absolutely one hundred percent correct. So you know, where are we at here? How do we put all this together? And again, I would we're under remember, attack. George Soros is the head of it. He needs yep. to be dealt with. There you go. We have to think bigger and look at the bigger picture because at the, at the at the very heart of this is the world economy, is the globalist, and of course America is the speed bump between the 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 new world order, shall we say? And even the though old, it props uh, it up, it's the schizophrenia right. of these people politically right. and economically and spiritually. Uh, Mr. Hagman, let me ask you this question. I, I know there's people above Soros, but he's one of the top kingpins. Why is this guy so politically bulletproof? I mean, he is a supervillain, supervillain. Oh, I, I, he's had decades and decades of practice at it. Plus, he's, you know, he is, is uh, contacts his, um, hey, money buys power. And, and of course, he's, he's, got, he's got no money problems. So you're looking at this infrastructure, I believe, where he is at the epicenter of his epicenter by way of his billions of dollars. Oh, I agree. Oh, In fact, here's the key. It is... Hundreds of times bigger than Bernie Madoff's scam. He's got all the major world leaders tied into it. He's too corrupt to fail because he'll bring them all down with him. And that's why he's so hard to beat, because he's corrupted them. He's gotten so many people involved in corruption. He's been a Rothschild agent. He knows where all the bodies are buried. And so that's why he's such an arrogant sack of crap. Uh, amen to that. Yeah, you're exactly right. And so the bottom line here with this, and I was watching your broadcast running up to my appearance, and, and I would urge everyone to, to listen to what you've got to say. Listen to your sources, because your sources are echoing mine. We have different sources. You've got it with the CIA and other agencies. I've got it, DHS and the FBI. So when you combine these sources, 
we're seeing this, and you're right, this is a, a, a very dangerous time to be alive, but it's also an exciting time to be alive. Um, however, we have to expect, I think, the unexpected, what people are not seeing. Let's talk uh, about that exactly. What's their plan B curveball? Because they are floundering right now. Well, I, I, th I think they need to retain their power at all costs. And how are they going to do that? If they can't do it through Hillary, Diane, Rodham, Clinton, then they've got to find some other way of doing it. But the other way of doing it would be to bring down the entire system, burn down the entire house, the global house, and then restructure it according to their uh, their Babylonian plans, if you will. So that's what I think they're looking at. They're looking at if we can't win domestically, let's take down the entire house globally. Let's engage. And that would be done with a war or uh, economics or or together, because we already see the the German banks look like they're going to be the big detonator. Well, and I think I think at the, at the center of this too is is the economic factor, the, the fragility of the petrodollar, the um, the fact that uh, they want to take down the U.S. dollar, they want to kill the U.S. dollar. They've said that for years. We've attempted to expose That's that. That's Soros' admitted goal. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and, and when that happens, we, and, and we are already losing much of our buying power, which is reflected by the racial and, and societal acrimony we're seeing here in the United States play out. So is, is, is what we're seeing with respect to the civil riot or the riots and the civil uh, unrest, is that a result of this loss of buying power or is the loss of buying power reflective uh, reflected by the, the riots. I mean, we, we have to look at this with with uh, bigger glasses, not with, not through a microscope, but through a larger lens here. And I think once I see the big picture, 35,000 yeah. foot look down. Do you, do you do you agree with me or disagree? I think the New World Order is in deep trouble. They admit it's in deep trouble. They have articles in the Financial Times of London uh, and scores of others saying world government's in trouble. We've got to get Hillary in or everything's going to unravel because of Brexit and now this. People are learning about diplomatic immunity. They're learning that big mega banks are immune from prosecution. They're learning about Soros. They're learning about how this super class is fomenting uh, all this division around the world. And as soon as the public finally understands that down at the grassroots, I don't see how they can ever reverse uh, their political uh, comeuppance. Well, maybe they can reverse it, but certainly they can eradicate many of the uh, objectors to the new system. And, and, you know, go back to the Georgia Guidestones, for example. You know, what's the objective there? To reduce the population. So they're willing it, to do anything. Oh, I, I have no doubt in my mind. And the, uh, the my source within the federal government, with the, within the FBI said, uh, trust me on this, that these people are the most vicious, uh, cannibalistic people that you'll ever meet uh, behind closed doors. And, and now we're seeing it openly. Well, let's go back to the FBI director. I mean, I know for a lot of people that are good people, they say, no, this guy really is good. He's trying to reform things. So I give him the benefit of the doubt. He comes out and for 80% of the speech, you know, a month ago, says she should be, be indicted. She's horrible. She's evil. But then says, but, but no prosecutors will do it. And then I sat back and kind of got angry. But then I thought about it more. Clearly now there's a war going on between DHS, uh, I mean, sectors of DHS and the Justice Department on top uh, run by Lynch. And clearly there's leaks coming out from the other agencies trying to expose what's happening. Uh, and so from your sources, who is the FBI director and what does he really stand for? And why did he back down when the word was he really was going to call for uh, Hillary to be indicted? Well, the, uh, just based on what I've been hearing, and the, these are from my sources within, within the uh, FBI itself, uh, Comey started out very good in terms of his intent, his his, his desires. Uh, the investigation that he conducted was fair, now, fair based on the parameters that, that they were given. So I, I, I'll give that caveat. Um, they, they were hogtied from the beginning with certain issues with Hillary Clinton. They could have put her under oath. They didn't. They could have done a lot of things differently. So the... So the investigation uh, was sabotaged from the beginning procedure. From the beginning. Yeah, yeah. However... For folks that don't know, they can use our Constitution against us. If they set it up where things aren't done right, you can't do it because it's been foiled. Right, right. And, and imagine this, though. Imagine being the FBI director recommending criminal charges and, and, and then not having them, not having the Justice Department pick, it up, pick up the mantle and say, okay, we're going to pursue this based on your recommendations. Well, obviously, that would put Comey in a really bad position, not with the, well, not only with the public, the perception of the public, but within his own rank and file, within his, within his people, within the, uh, within the what FBI. What about the new investigations, uh, criminal probes of the State Department uh, Foundation, where it's been proven that the State Department and the Foundation were acting as one? 
Well, and, and there's right now you got three um, three independent investigations taking place right now with respect to the foundation. Three U.S. attorneys are involved. Three separate investigations. Plus, you've got a subcommittee, a Senate subcommittee, about ready to to uh, look at this as well. You've got all of this overlap between the Clinton Foundation, other NGOs, the people within the State Department as well. Uh, if this goes in the direction against Clinton, against Hillary Clinton and, and Bill and, and their associates, then this is why they're going to have to do something, I suspect, contrary to, to the big talkers like Rush Limbaugh and others who say, well, you know, we, we nothing's going to happen. Well, wait a minute. Uh, certainly it could happen, especially given the attitude by the FBI. Well, by I'll the, tell you yeah. this, and again, I'm not bragging. It was shocking as I've been to a couple of DNCs and RNCs. And I've been around the Secret Service a bunch. Uh, and they do seem generally focused, professional, uh, almost dog-like, you know, in their duty. But state police, local police, other cops they brought in, Secret Service, federal marshals. I was a rock star at the RNC. We wouldn't even show it on camera because I didn't want to get these people in trouble. I was like, look, don't cheer me in public and salute me and all this stuff. Because, I mean, I've been critical of the police state, not of police themselves, but of the political directive of all this. But just as a snapshot of the Secret Service with like tears in their eyes and stuff talking to me. I was like, what do they know? And they're just like, you're dead on, keep it up. You know, pray for this country. They seem totally freaked out by what they know. And of course they won't tell me all of it. Just, it, it, it's, 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 it. so someone asked what you think that means, Mr. Hagman. Hagman and Hagman.com, this guy was way ahead of his time. We're gonna open the phones up for your calls and Joe Biggs has breaking news coming up as well. Obviously, when you talk to different sources, it's it's dangerous for the source to be giving you info. They don't try to give you any classified info or, you know, stuff protected by uh, privacy rights or things like that. It's more like, go read what this guy wrote in this article. That's dead on. Or what you're saying's right on. You need to look into more of this. But now it's getting to the point of people are in meetings running security and they are hearing unbelievable plots being hatched against Trump. Uh, stuff where people got to speak out. Unbelievable plans to like stage an attack on Hillary, to blame it on Trump. And then once they've done that, they make Trump look bad, then they can go after Trump. I, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that was going on in World War II, like in, in 1944 in Germany, when folks were not knowing what to do about Hitler. I mean, it's not that the government's perfect. It's certainly not. The special interests are what are really bad, the globalists. But the people in the government have now been forced to the point of where they're realizing, oh, my gosh, the patriots that warned about this world government are right. I mean, George Soros' emails are out. The DNC emails are out. There's tens of thousands of them. Within days of them being out, we've already gotten into the emails. They're up on Infowars.com, DrudgeReport.com, from The Daily Caller and others that have dug them up, saying, we're going to bring in the migrants and, and get a bunch of government money to take care of them and then use them as political weapons and make it the new normal and merge the Middle East with Europe and take over the U.S. and use the new immigrant groups as our political voting block to control everything and call everybody racist and don't go along with it. I mean, this is a criminal conspiracy, and we have the diary. It's open and shut. It's open and shut. Going back to Mr. Hagman in a moment, we are running a special on one of our top nutraceuticals that is just really a old apothecary recipe. Every major plant, derivative, uh, herb that's known to clean out the body and flush out parasites, it's living defense. It sells out for six months a lot of times because we can't get got so many ingredients, you can't get them all totally clean and have them at California levels where, you know, it can't have as much lead as the air has in it. So it's a really clean product. All our products are because they go to the highest standards. Or we couldn't sell them in places like California. That's why it sells out so often. It's a very popular product. I think it'll only be sold out a month this time. I'm still discounting at 20%, even though it's about to sell out. Infowarslife.com. Infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site. Amerageddon is a $5 million budget film produced by Chuck Norris's son, the great patriot, Mike Norris. Gary Haven funded it, and it exposes a fictional New World Order takeover here in the United States. You get one copy for 1995, get a second copy for 1995, $39.90, and get two of my films free, Matrix of Evil and Fall of the Republic. And it's great to have these in your archive, great to donate them to the local library, great to support this type of work in the 
profit we make obviously funds this operation that you see having such a giant effect. So thank you for your support, your prayers. Thanks for shopping with the good guys at InfoWarsStore.com. We're back calling toll-free 888-253-3139. I want to thank all the PrisonPlanet.tv Natalie News members, but I also want to just thank all of you that put up with me a lot of the time and that get the video links, the audio links, the, 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 the different articles, and that you post them and you spread them because I'm risking my life doing this, and I'm not doing this to lose. I know history, and getting back to the point I asked before the break, Mr. Hagman, who's a wise man, the mainstream globalist media was there, and they wrote about it in, in scores of publications. I could care less about having the, the super elite beyond backstage passes to the RNC if it was to go see a George Herbert Walker Bush or a Mitt Romney. But the fact that the Trump people gave us passes that, uh, I mean, literally maybe 100 people had, it was in Newsweek, you name it, Jones, you know, the controversy had like, you know, the super level passes, the ace of spades. Oh, my God, this is it portends how evil Trump is. Absolutely, it portends how horrible Trump is to you and your globalist agenda. And it shows how fast we can take this country back once people get it and once we have leadership. Because I'm here to tell you, they want us to have a war with the police because on average, the police are more awake than the general public. They want us to have a civil war with the military because they want to take out their enemies at the same time. Just like Hillary got caught in the emails confirming what the Chicago police told us and others. They funded people dressed up like Bernie supporters to attack Trump supporters. That way you blame Trump for violence and Bernie, who looks good. It's elementary, my dear Watson. But we've caught them. We've caught them, and people understand this now, and it's really scaring them. It's really upsetting them, and it shows that they want to have a civil war in this country where you randomly shoot cops in the back of the head, some weird leftist communist civil war. It's not a communist takeover, but it's communism they use at the grassroots, just like Milwaukee it was communist doing that. That's how the globalists tend to rob us is playing us off against each other. Instead, the feds went in 30 years ago and funded militias, because they knew it was a constitutional movement. I'm going to get Hagman's take on this. Some of them to be violent, to put out bad rhetoric against police and local government, because those were natural allies for the police and military. It was constitutional. To brand militia as bad. See, it's all this branding. Well, here's the deal. I'm not going to be branded as if I want to kill cops. I'm not going to be branded that I'm out to blow things up. That's the weathermen. That's the people that advise Obama. That's all of their people. That's, you know, the guy pledging his book to, to uh, Lucifer, Rules for Radicals, all the rest of this garbage. These people mean business, folks. They have a plan. We know their plan. And so when I get the emails, see the comments, oh, you're just a cop worshiper, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's ridiculous. I'm for good police, just like I'm for good judges or good school teachers or good farmers or good, you know, engineers. I judge people individually, and I want my republic, and I can see a foreign, outside, globalist move to overthrow our country, and I can see them do it in other nations, and I'm resisting it because I'm an American, and this is my republic. And they call Russia draconian for kicking the George Soros foundations out of their country and kicking his people out of the country when they catch him landing in the nation, when Soros admits he's trying to overthrow Russia right now. I'm surprised Russia isn't arresting those people that fly in. Those are foreign corporate agents. See, we always think of Russian agents or American agents or Chinese agents, and that goes on. But corporations and global banks have their own intelligence agencies, and they're playing us off against each other. Now, I'm ranting. I'm giving you the floor, Mr. Hagman. Get into other facets of this. Uh, do you think I'm uh, right about how awake the police and military are and Black Lives Matter uh, what are they going to try running this up to the election? Where do we go from here? Well, you, you know, though, I think you're 100% accurate, everything that you've said. And the more I see and the more I talk to my police sources, especially on the local level, the county level, the state level as well, <clears throat> they're sick and tired of being uh, used as pawns in the game, in the larger game here, the political game that we see taking place in the, in the United States. Now, having said that, um, uh, the, the uh, yeah, I, I've got to just reaffirm the Saul Alinsky playbook that you talked about, Rules for Radicals. You know, May 2nd, 1969, Hillary Diane Rodham Clinton wrote her senior thesis uh, on that Rules for Radicals, on Saul Alinsky's uh, ideological concept of, of just taking, burning everything down. 
and she's implementing that or attempting and she to pen have it. She pen palding. Yeah, very much. Yes, yes. And of course, the, the Clara Piven strategy that we've seen, which uh, pigtails onto or uh, it hooks onto the uh, Keynesian economics that we're seeing here in the United States, all of this combined is working toward the destruction of our constitutional republic, which you have done much to expose and to restore and to maintain the constitutional republic, which is is what we're attempting to do as well. So having said all of that, you're dead on accurate with respect to what's taking place. Um, I, I do believe that 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 100 percent. Now, the, the where we're at right now, I do believe is a situation where they are going to pull something. And this is based on my uh, w the weight of my sources as well. They're going to do something ahead of the elections in November to ensure, uh, at least in their mind, to ensure the um, their plans for world domination and domination of the West, and specifically the United States, goes forward. Whether that means sacrificing Hillary, as much as that sounds incredible, if if they've got to move Hillary out of the way a tad. Uh, knowing that she'll never go to jail for any of this, but certainly might be taken out of the game, they may do that if they, if they, or whatever the case might might be. But what we're seeing here is political theater uh, to cover the actions of the globalists here in the United States. So you're 100 percent accurate, and, and yes, I will say the uh, the police, and, and I, I love I love what you said because I, I get a lot of email as well saying I'm, I'm a police officer in uh, in uh, Fredericks or Maryland or whatever. Give my best to, to Alex when you talk to him uh, tomorrow. So, you know, we get a lot of these as well. So the rank and file of the police want to do the right thing. They're being federalized at the top. They understand what's going on. But the, the majority of the people who are, are actually on the streets having guns pointed at them are, in fact, supporters of yours and ours and the supporters of the, of the people that, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, just the average person. So and they see that we're getting everyone's being played one against the other. They're, they're seeing this. This uh, artificially uh, uh, created, orchestrated racial tension. This racial tension would not exist without Obama, Clinton, the globalists, and the communist influence, as you stated earlier. What else is on the radar? Well, the economic again, the petrodollar is 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 really a big thing. Um, that, that's what Russia did. And, and the agreement with Iran and now Turkey uh, switching sides to from NATO to, to uh, Russia, more of a Russia-China alliance, uh, snubbing, them, uh, snubbing the U.S. out of this, using uh, anything but the U.S. dollar. That really has put us on the ropes. And the situation in Syria, the situation in Crimea, Ukraine, all of this combined uh, is, is these are all global chess moves by the globalists. But again, now everything that happens here in the United States, in particular the elections, who's going to be the next uh, U.S. president, of course, um, we have to look at all of this. We have to look at the elections, I should say, against that, that backdrop, against the backdrop of what's taking place globally, because everything is on a global level. And what happens on a local, state, and federal level, of course, is a microcosm of the, the globalist agenda. Doug Hagman of HagmanandHagman.com. Looking at this, and I want to have Joe Biggs pop in here with some breaking news. He's in Milwaukee right now covering the situation up there. We see these times historically when all these major political realignments happen, where all these wars happen, where sides start flipping sides. Most historians agree with us that we're at the most critical juncture in history and that we see similar things that happened before World War I and World War II. And that the world is hurtling towards uh, major economic collapse and warfare. And then meanwhile, we have Soros and others trying to stir up collapses all over the place to consolidate control. Do you think these people are crazy enough to go ahead with this plan, even though it looks like they're not in a good position? Sure. I have no doubt in my mind. These people, as you had said, you had described the information you got received from your sources where there's security. These people are openly talking about their criminality, their criminal plans, the, the cabals of, of lawlessness. I mean, look at the lawlessness that we're seeing today here in this country, uh, where you can't get a conviction uh, or, or even interest in, in opening an investigation when, when there's evidence. And I'm Look convinced. at Hillary. It's just everywhere. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, so I I mean that's I'm, why they're so arrogant, because they know they have the Justice Department. Right, right. But they don't want to lose that, and they can see losing that. They, they, they can 
they can see the writing on the wall. That's why they're 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 pitching the polls. They're saying, oh well, Donald Trump is behind, and he's uh, they're, they're going to do whatever they can to uh, negate. So Trump. this is all or nothing on both sides. I mean, this I, this, I, this is this it. Is, to me, based on everything I've heard, uh, Alex, this is for all the marbles, as I like to say. This is this is the final throws for this domination. And uh, people say, well, that's kind of oh man, that's don't, don't say that because that's that's causing fear. No, I mean, I think it's just reality. I think that, that now is the hinge Look, moment. Well, the Secret Service are out in the middle of the cameras and the lights and everywhere, shaking my hand and stuff. I mean, they've never been like that. You know that they don't care anymore. And, That's and, right. And, of course, I'm told that across agencies, people are ready for them to steal the election. They're ready for the globalists to make their next move. And the military and police are just ready now. I think, I think that the establishment's really miscalculated. I think it's moved the point people don't care anymore. And they took everybody's restraint for weakness, uh, Doug. Yeah, yeah, and that's right. Our, our silence for apathy, our our uh, our, our uh, tolerance for acceptance. I I think that they're seeing now that they've miscalculated, perhaps. And another area of concern that I have, I'm just going to toss this out there too. And you wrote about this on uh, your website, Infowars.com, is the ISIS in presence in Mexico. Well, according to my sources, the uh, the the uh, importation of ISIS elements into the United States has been going at full full speed for the last three years. And by the way, let's cover that now because I, I'm getting Joe Biggs on about our source and more information on Hillary's health from the Secret Service. But since you mentioned that, we're about to go to break in a moment. I want to come back with that, Mr. Hagman. Biggs went down there off the Judicial Watch uh, memos and confirmed the mosque, confirmed the Islamists is going on. The FBI said no one even dares go in that area. It's the most dangerous area of Mexico. The movie Sicaria is basically about that area, you know, where there's firefights and tracers every night. The FBI met with Biggs uh, on record at the airport and said, you know, thank you for information, uh, and, and then basically debriefed him and said, yes, we know uh, this is going on. It's very credible, but we're basically not allowed to talk about it. So let's bring Joe Biggs in to briefly talk about that uh, from Milwaukee. He's on the phone right now. He'll be joining us on video. Uh, later, uh, Joe Biggs, or, or there is we have video now. Go ahead, Joe. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. We're actually standing right across from where the BP station was burnt down, much like uh, what we saw in Ferguson, Missouri, after those riots. Over to my right, we have a whole bunch of people trying to bring joy to the area. A lot of people are coming out trying to raise the money, help out the community, get a lot of these kids off the street and involved in something else. But uh, I heard you mentioning uh, about the uh, jihadi camp in Mexico. Yeah, that's something we started covering over a year ago. We had these reports from Judicial Watch that said that there was possibly an ISIS base operating in the Anapra area. Now, that is just south of El Paso, Texas. You cross over into uh, Ciudad Juarez, and then you head west about uh, 10 miles into a town called Anapra. And it's mostly run by cartels. And we initially came out with our reports. We were saying that there's a good possibility that cartels could be helping out these ISIS jihadis and smuggle them across the board because they're very familiar with that area. And people mocked us and said that, no, there's no way that cartels would help out. And now we have uh, ISIS guys who've been captured here in the U.S. who have actually come out and said, yes, they have brothers down there in Mexico that are waiting and they're using the cartels to smuggle these guys in. And they're waiting to carry out attacks in Arizona and in Texas. And the question is, why is the Border Patrol being ordered to stand down? Why wouldn't they at least stop ISIS-type people? It just seems like a total disregard and just don't care, just like the diseases coming across. Why not test them and treat people for TB and then let them in? Why just let them come in with TB? Joe Biggs will we'll answer that later. I want to come back with you and Mr. Hagman and get into more intel you got last night from our pipeline to the Secret Service uh, on uh, Hillary's health. We'll be back. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com are our main sites. Stay with us. But the good news is the word is spreading to really dizzying levels now. I, I would call this the Great Awakening right now. Now, we still face incredible challenges, and this is our darkest hour. But through this storm, I can see the sun ahead. Mr. Hagman will be with us 20 minutes, 30 minutes the next hour. We're going to open the phones up. Then our, my reporters are going to pop back in from Milwaukee after that. But Biggs, notice we broke the big leak news on Sunday with the Secret Service. And of course, people know we've got a lot of big leaks over the years. We've broken thousands of big stories, hundreds of number one stories. Uh, we're in the top 100 of news websites in the world. Drudge is number one. Uh, we reach 28 million people a week. The media knows it's real. Or they would have tried to debunk it. Total silence 
on that bombshell, Joe Biggs. Well, some of the new revelations that I've received uh, over the last 24 hours from my contact uh, within the Secret Service, uh, he pretty much laid out the fact that if you look at these other uh, high vis, what I mean by that is a high visibility uh, candidate, you know, politician, a diplomat, someone like that, when they move in motorcades, they usually have to set aside a certain amount of police officers, i.e. in on motorcycles and in vehicles when they go to a certain city. So when Hillary Clinton comes into, say, Philadelphia, like she did today, they're supposed to set aside two squad cars and a number of motorcycles that can pull ahead, stop the traffic at those four ways to allow that motorcade to zip through as fast as possible. But due to her uh, you know, falling health or failing health, she's not able to go through all that, that, that high-speed process. And what they're doing is they're telling these police officers to stand down. So now you have a motorcade with a lot of high-ranking people within our government, and you have secret services that don't, that don't have that protection. And now they have to stop at each red light, which is putting lives in danger in case someone wants to attack her or commit some kind of crime against her. That's putting lives in danger because she can't handle the lights going by. So that's something that's very dangerous. And to be clear, they're not giving us secret medical information. They're not giving us documents. They're just pointing out things that we can then observe that are public knowledge. Yeah, so I also have a guy that's going to be in Philadelphia today, uh, and then uh, there's going to be another rally coming up in Cleveland, I believe, where I'm going to have some guys that are going to try to catch her motorcade and get that footage to show us how there's a stand down of the police to help get those people to and from I'll there. Also show the handicap uh, ramps that lower down from the bottom of the uh, vehicle. Yeah, exactly. So now you've got, you got other information from another military source uh, that concurs with, to, with, with, with my sources about other stuff that's so unbelievable. We're going to just have to develop that and cover that when you get back. Okay. But, Let me know uh, when you want to go back. Other tidbits, Joe Biggs. Well, the interesting thing is, is if we if we take a step back and look at the broader picture of what's going on, you have these leaks coming out. It's almost like there's this internal coup that's now been created almost by this new patriot movement. The fact that Donald Trump has this popular vote. I'd call it counter America coup. Counter coup. Well, oh, yeah, but, 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 but what it is, though, it's the fact that there's so many people that have been working in the government that felt like they've had no voice. They felt like they haven't had an opportunity to expose corruption. I think people see light knowing that if Donald Trump gets elected, I agree. we can get out these bad people. And that's why you see these revelations. That's why you see these people coming out with this information, these hacks and things like that. I think it's good, and it's scaring the elite. And that's why when I get back to Austin, you and I are going to talk about a lot of this information that we've both gotten, and it's really going to open up a lot of eyes and expose and show that's right, what's that's right. going What on. happens is the Secret Service and others see us with the top link over the weekend on Drudge, and they see that we're willing to put stuff out. And that's why we got the Homeland Security documents um, seven years ago that say veterans and gun owners are the number one um, enemy. And, 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 and by the way, Joe, you're technically right. The government is, you know, Clinton and, you know, uh, or, or, or Obama right now. So, so we'd say it's a coup because they're not following them. But these are hijackers, so I call it a counter coup. But you're absolutely right. We were in the middle of the resistance against the foreign occupation. It's happening, people. It's happening. But the enemy will strike back. Get ready. I'm going to come back to Joe, finish up, and then to Mr. Hagman and your phone calls. America is a great jewel hijacked by globalists. They've used our great nation's treasure and ingenuity and will to build a planetary government. Now they wish to shut down what's left of the republic and enslave us once and for all. And I got news for them. We've only begun to fight. And all over Europe and all over the world, people are seceding. They're pulling out. They're saying no. Globalism is in great crisis. I know they bought off the churches the last 200 years and told everybody that, you know, it's the end of the world and evil can't be beaten. But truth is, evil will be beaten until it's uh, God's time to let it out of the box one more time. Uh, going back to Mr. Hagman, he's going to stay with us the rest of the hour to take your phone calls. Our reporters are going to be popping in at the bottom of the hour. Uh, but just hearing what Joe Biggs was saying, I'm going to get a final comment from him. Uh, but Doug, really, he crystallized it. This is a coup, a counter coup, whatever you want to call it. This is... Call it the death throes of the republic? Well, I don't think it's that. I think it's the reawakening of the sleeping giant uh, to know that the most awake, I, I cannot hammer this enough, the most awake people are the police, are the military, that the globalists count on to enforce all this. And, and the fact that they've been persecuting them to try to intimidate them into line, they miscalculated like Tokyo Rose. The intimidation didn't work. It only pissed them off. And so they've just been calculating the best way to stand up against this. Is that a fair way to say it? Yeah, I, I think so. And I think neither one is really mutually exclusive. I think that we're seeing a coup, the counter coup. 
Um, and perhaps some of this, to some extent, Alex, maybe it was, um, there was a plan much like uh, 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 Cloward Piven, perhaps, to overwhelm the system. You know, we're seeing a lot of assets here domestically being uh, being sent out to, to quell the, the riots, the disturbances that are, that are orchestrated on the other side. Oh, they're so, clearly trying to bankrupt things. Yeah, and federalize. absolutely. They admit that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think in general, yeah, you're absolutely 100 percent correct. And I'm just I'm amazed at the information that you're developing uh, that that that. Uh, seems to substantiate what we're getting as well. So it does seem like there, there's this awakening taking place, and I hope it continues. But what do they have? What are they going to counter with? I suppose is my question. That's the big question. We're going to talk about that after the break. Uh, Joe Biggs, what do you think they're going to try to counter with? Well, it's the force awakens. Think about this. We have this force that has been the government, and you had this dark side that's dominated for so long, and now we have this potential presidential candidate that can really come out and shine through and a lot of these people are now the lights the light side of the force is coming out and seeing this and they're starting to expose a lot of things they're coming out the email i got last night it's from homeland security uh, the department of uh, or the head or the department of i can't think of it right now oga all these different entities emailed me last night with different information confirming what it is we've been talking about the past few days there's a great awakening happening and everyone is now seeing that there's finally a chance that they can come out with being without being persecuted they have a voice now Think everybody has to move at once then they can't get us all yes we need to come out we need to come out with this information mass Quick. wave information all warfare attacks roger that well hey i want to salute the folks that hack the democrats they're criminals i want to salute the folks that hack soros i mean uh, and, and and listen this is only the beginning this is only the beginning isn't it joe oh this is only the beginning the information i'm getting every day i'm getting data dumps people sending me stuff just waves of information coming through. Now Now that we've come out with this information on Sunday about Hillary Clinton with the Secret Service, more and more departments, more and more people I know are reaching out with information. They want this to come to an end. Most people do not want Hillary Clinton. That's like in the 90 percentile. Everyone wants to see patriotism thrive. They want to have freedom, and we do not need another Clinton in the White I mean, House. We got a weirdo Nazi collaborator trying to get people to go out and burn stuff and shoot police. I mean, give me a break. All right, Joe Biggs, we'll talk to you and the rest of the crew. We'll talk to Rob Dew and Jakari Jackson. Jakari first, we got the bottom the of the place tonight. We got the Trump rally tonight, too, at 730. That's going to be in West Bend, uh, just above Milwaukee. So we'll be there tonight covering that as well. Great goods. We'll have some live coverage on the nightly news. Great job, crew. We'll talk to you in 30 minutes. All right, Jakari Jackson, coming up in 30 minutes. We're going to take your phone calls and talk to Doug Hagman straight ahead. He's going to ride shotgun with us and co-host for the rest of the hour. Then Paul Joseph Watson from London, England, always a firebrand of key intel. He'll be joining us. Toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. What do you think about what we're talking about? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Stay with us. Hour number three, Paul Watson. Another fresh horse in the fight comes in. At the start of the next hour from London, England, we have the founder of the Northeast Intelligence Network, co-host of Hagman and Hagman, Doug Hagman, our guest, uh, a guy who, I mean, his sources back before any of this even started, he laid out the whole battle plan from his FBI and DHS sources. And I've just got to tell you that um, I don't lionize our government, our federal government. And the things it does, I think the DEA has been caught doing horribly unconstitutional things, so have other agencies. But this is our country. We have a bunch of multinational globalists in the middle of it trying to bring it down. So we can reform stuff later. We can fight with each other later as Americans. We're not going to have a bunch of foreign globalist weirdos like George Soros in here playing us off against each other like we're a bunch of idiots. I think that's the message we got to put out here. And the people that don't get that, even some libertarians and conservatives that see the excesses of government and police and see police as a representation of government. Celebrating cops being shot in the back of the head. And I do see that sentiment out there. Is the stuff collapses are made of. And. The type of people that talk like that, I guarantee are the ones that when the rubber meets the road, aren't going to raise a rifle up to defend their family or this republic. I'm doing everything I can to fix things peacefully. I'm doing everything I can so people know who the real enemies are in this country so they don't kick off a civil war and then we all kill each other and do the globalist job for them. I'm going to explain this one more time and go back to our guests and the calls. The microcosm of the confirmed emails 
that Hillary, and when we got this from sources, I was like, she's that bold? And then it turned out to be true. They had buses coming in, paid for by Move On and other groups, that Soros, with Bernie Sanders shirts on, given a lunch and like 50 bucks, depending on which city it was, and they put them up in hotels to attack Trump people and then to say Trump was at fault and Bernie was at fault. That is a microcosm of the civil war they want to start in this country with, between citizens and local government. It's stupid. And it's them playing their enemies off against each other. The globalists are against this country. They want to bankrupt it because they can't compete with it. We're under scientific military attack. New emails are out showing Soros directing the UN and Peter Sutherland how to flood Europe and use it as a political force to bring down the nations. My, I can't exaggerate enough to describe how bad this is, okay? Because reality is much bigger than what I can say. But we're up against cold-blooded evil. So, are there a lot of issues, a lot of problems in this country? Absolutely. We'll fix those problems after we've defeated the New World Order. Because it's the big enemy that wants you poor. I'll guarantee you, your local government, if it's not New World Order run, some of them are, it wants you to be prosperous and successful. For all our problems, Americans like to be successful. And I'm not going to sit here and watch them blow this country's engine, because they've almost done it. Mr. Hagman, other points, um, the awakening, uh, tricks they may pull, and then I want to go to phone calls, my friend. Uh, Hagman and Hagman.com, thanks for joining us. You know, th th thanks so much for having me, Alex. And <clears throat> I, th I think you just really summarized it very uh, eloquently. I what we're seeing right now <clears throat> is the plans that have gone awry. You know, the, the globalists can make the plans. They have their objectives. We laid them out back in 2000, well, 2008, uh, 2007, 2008, and again in 2011 into 2012. Um, the, the 2012 election went to Obama. So, of course, there was no necessity at that point to really pull the uh, grenade pin on, on anything uh, of of detriment, you know, to 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 burn the house down back then. But now we're facing an entirely different. They're facing an entirely different scenario with a lot more people who are awake. And, and I think this is a race right now. It's an information race as well as a war. Uh, the more information that gets out there, the more people are saying, "Wait a minute, there's something wrong here. We know there's something wrong." Uh, and, but but then of course, Alex, you're going to have people, and I think we see it. The people that. Uh, you could have Hillary sacrificing uh, children on the White House lawn, and they would find a way to spin it or to approve it or to uh, uh, whatever, uh, to cover it up. But having said all of that, I think right now, today, and in the days, weeks, and months ahead, I think we're looking at a very volatile situation domestically and globally. And I think it's, it's incumbent upon us as uh, truth tellers and truth seekers as well to get the information out there to inform as many people as possible and to be very um, uh, alert and, and, and aware of what could happen and, and to really expect the unexpected, as I said earlier. I think a lot of times, and I look back in, in my investigative career, anytime I've ever had a problem, it usually comes from someplace I never thought it would come from. You know, you blindsided me, never saw it coming. So I think we have to kind of watch that as well. Um, uh, you know, watch what, they're, uh, what we're not seeing, perhaps, what we don't really expect. And I think that's our, our greatest They could threat. release some type of bioweapon. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. They could. Uh, I, mean, I mean, really, yeah. there's anything they could do. Yeah. And I do believe, uh, Alex, I, I think that, that, that the, the fact that you've got these uh, tens, of, really tens of thousands of, of uh, Muslims coming into this country to balkanize America, to, to water down our culture, our language, our borders, as Michael Savage says, and to really take over, change the, the, uh, the, uh, 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 change the makeup of our country, I think is part and parcel to this, but the ISIS factor as well, they're not finished with ISIS. They're not finished weaponizing. Well, obviously, they brought in five million there. It's probably millions here they're covering up, saying it's tens of thousands. We know that's not true. It's tens of thousands in Austin, Texas alone. How do they think they're going to get away with more jihad attacks than ever before when they're the ones that brought them in and then they take our rights as a counter to that? I mean, clearly they've got some big plan for forcing all the jihadis in. Soros talks about political opportunities. What does he mean by that uh, in this new email? It, it, the, wow, uh, great question. Interesting concept, uh, the opportunity. I, I, I think any time that there is a, a, uh, 
a problem, a crisis, a situation that is well, like like the uh, uh, who said it, Rahm Emanuel. Don't never let a, a crisis go to waste. I think any time that you we have or we're faced or the country that is is faced with a situation that uh, uh, is problematic, I think that it could be spun into something different. For example, uh, we've got suppose well we've got we've got this 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 massive uh, uh, problem with Islam in terms of the attacks o- over in Europe. If that happens here, we it, well, there's going to be pushback. Well, how do you handle that pushback? You don't go after the anti-Islamic. Uh, speech, you go after the entire religious speech. So you neutralize Christians, for example, in that case. So I- any event, whether it's a shooting or uh, a beheading or an attack. That's the admitted time, plan. No, I mean, they admit in right. Europe, they just ban all free speech, period. The, and there you go. So the, I, to me, I believe that's the uh, uh, written implementation, the plans, or the written plans of the implementation of that larger Again, think bigger. Well, they've uh, admitted global government is in trouble from the Washington Post to the Financial Times of London. And folks, we, we should do a whole show asking listeners, what type of curveballs could they throw? What type of tricks do they have up their sleeves? That is a really great point. And I'll tell listeners this. You with your smartphone or you with a camera, wherever you're at, videotape everything when there's a terror attack. Videotape everything when there's something weird going on. Get it out on the Internet and analyst, citizen analyst will look at that and keep catching them because the establishment is scared at how much humet just regular people have, how much human intelligence is out there. Folks, you're just as effective as anybody in history when you decide to take action. Uh, and I'm telling you, because I'm, I'm not the smartest guy around, and I've done a lot 21 years on air. Take action, know what we're facing, realize what's going on, reach out to people, and we're going to defeat this new world order. Uh, let's go ahead and go to some phone calls here. He's been holding the longest. Uh, let me say Islamic rule in USA, DNC leaks. Uh, let's go ahead. And, uh, voter fraud, cell phone photos of polls, Trump and Hillary. Who should I go to first? Who's been holding the longest here? Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Ed in Arizona. You're on the air with the founder of the Northeast Intelligence Network, Mr. Hagman. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Please just give me a minute. I'll be very brief. 100% way to end voter fraud. Everyone take your cell phone into the privacy of the voting booth. Take a photo of your vote for Trump. Post it to a website with your zip code. You could create a simple website. Also, those vote protector people. We can actually change the entire paradigm. Sure. It's just, of, it's just uh, organizing, coordinating all those people. The bigger thing is exit pollers in the, in the 10 battleground states. That's what Trump's doing. But yes. Well, yes, that will work. Also, um, it, well, it would be verifiable. It would be instant. And there, if you could just get this pushed out, maybe the drudge could carry it. If you get enough people to do that, it's instant, verifiable with a zip code and a photo. Um, and it, I think it would change the entire paradigm of exit polling. Co- okay. There's a lot of coalition data stuff there and, 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 and regionalization and tracking and verification. And, and, then, and then you'd have security issues and, and ID issues and integration issues and re-up feed coalition issues. I mean, I mean, the point is we need exit polls. Go ahead. Oh, yes, I know. But I'm just saying if, if there's zip codes attached to just a photo of a vote and there's always those little codes on each photo. But I also want Trump to think big ideas of getting us back to the moon, back missions to Mars. And I'm sick of people referring to uh, America's heartland as the Rust Belt. That's a pejorative against our country. I think uh, Trump should really take offense to that. I personally do. And they should be renowned as Americans' uh, industrial heartland again instead of just being referred to as the Rust Belt. And they act like that's just the no, normal. I hear you. I hear you, and I appreciate your call. Uh, really uh, good points. I, and I'm not poo-pooing what you said. It's just actually trying to organize that, and then everybody takes a photo and sends it to a site with a, with a uh, zip code. Then how do you visually scan that and then collate all those i mean that um mr hagman yeah um I, i'm not sure <laughs> wow uh anything digital in my view right now could be manipulated and that certainly could be corrupted we we definitely need to have some sort of verification we need exit it's, polls and we need poll yep. watchers there to make sure we don't yep. have people voting repeatedly yep i, I agree I mean, and, I mean, and, I, folks i've yep. talked to the top election fraud experts that's what needs to be done i'm not pooping what the caller's saying he's going the right direction raising this problem well, it, it goes back to, you, you know, the, the judges, the um, uh, uh, ID for voting. Come on. I mean, how, how simple is that one issue? The Democrats in, in a bunch of states are trying to pass laws to let illegals vote. Sure. Vote early and often.
for the illegals. Absolutely. They have illegals now doing recruiting drives. And again, I can't go to other countries and do that. I'm not like, thinking, why do you hate these people? I don't hate them. It's just, they, it's just, it's organized crime. God, Lord. Uh, who's, no, no. Here, let's go ahead and take another call. Uh, let's talk to Michael in Tennessee. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Good, brother. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to address Mr. Hagman. He was talking earlier about uh, Hillary executing kids on the front lawn of the White House and that they would find a way to to make it okay for her. Why not just call that extreme late-term abortion? Uh, actually, <laughs> we've then, gone out on the street in California and Austin and told liberals that Hillary or Obama wanted to kill kids up to three, and they agree with it, and say it is late-term post-birth abortion. So that's actually not a joke. And Islamic State, when they were cutting little kids' heads off and a video came out, they said it was an accident. So she would just have to say it was an accident, and then it would be okay. Oh, of course. You know, somebody told somebody, and that somebody disappears and gets killed, and it's all an accident. But see, no matter what, uh, no matter how extreme you say, they're already doing it. Of course. Uh, another another thing I wanted to bring up real quick. I was doing some reading earlier on uh, on Wikipedia under New World Order, and believe it or not, they mention Alex Jones not as a liberator of truth, but as as a right wing agitator. And I just find that amazing that they take people who are who are giving the people what they deserve, the truth, and forming. Where was this? Where was this? If you if you go on Wikipedia on New World Order and go down to where it says modern conspiracy theories. It labels you as a right-wing... Yeah, agitator. you know, somebody ought to do a piece on that because, because the world government has been announced. I mean, the Pope's calling for it. End of borders, global taxes. We should be getting awards for, you know, talking about it 20 years ago or, or, or Ron Paul 30 years ago or Ronald Reagan 50 years ago. We don't. We get ridiculed because we were right, Doug. Yeah. I mean, Gary Allen in his book, None Dare Call a Conspiracy, which you've got on your website. Absolutely. I mean, this has been out there for a long time. And I find it really interesting. Now people are developing some some level of, uh, I don't know, guts, I guess. Uh, you know, now that the ice has been broken to come out and say, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess you guys were right. Meaning you uh, were right when you were talking well, about this. Well, you too, brother. I mean, hell, it was like. I was like three years old and had my dad sitting around the coffee table talking about this. So I'm certainly not, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm a late comer. Go ahead. No, no, it's just, it, it's interesting to see how this is all, all really developing and playing out. And it's interesting to see how each one of us, and, and I really believe this, anyone that's listening to this program or watching this program, you've got the opportunity to change the course of history. And if we don't do something right now, I don't believe we're going to have another chance at it. We have one chance, and the chance is now, and we need to take action. We need to to, 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 uh, to think not of ourselves, but of our children and of the legacy which we're going to leave behind. That's just my personal view. Absolutely. And look, look, Hillary Clinton has got over $100 million the last two years alone to her foundation from Gulf states. That's what we know of. That throw homosexuals off uh, buildings, that chop women's heads off if they talk back to their husband. And then I got to be lectured how I'm against a woman because I don't like Hillary. It has nothing to do with, with what's going on between her legs. She's a, she's a monster. And I'm just so sick of being told I'm sexist or racist when really all I'm guilty of in my life is spoiling everybody around me. I, I, I just, I'm so sick of it. Hmm. Exactly. You know, it, and I think we're going to see ties too, now that you mentioned this and we're going to see, as these emails become even more prolific, exposed, you're going to see ties where the Saudis, really Hillary Clinton has been on the, the, the payroll of the Saudis. She abused her position at the State Department, as you, as you write and point out. She has uh, uh, all of her aides, Huma Abedin, Cheryl Mills. You're going to see all this lawlessness, but being paid for by foreign entities that include, but are not limited to Saudi Arabia. Totally illegal if you or I did it. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, we'd be. Yeah, exactly. We'd be in the. In a we should be. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's what's crazy. I mean, not getting into the cops mind, but let's let's look at their position for a while. Um, and I know they're the front of the state, kind of the problem. We let the state become this. But I'm out there going to a Black Lives Matter communist event. Cops had just been shot days before. Cops, on average, don't get shot that often. But it's still a dangerous job. But what is dangerous is going to a Black Lives Matter rally. And I imagine I'm the main target there. I go and I do it. And it just put me in the mindset for like 30 minutes of being a cop at one of those rallies where you're out there in the middle of a square, anybody can shoot you. And so all I'm saying is at least have a little bit of empathy. And if we have empathy for the police, then they're going to listen to us. 
and we can reform what's happening when bad politicians are trying to twist the police. That's why they don't want us to get along with the police. They don't want the citizens to be interfacing with other citizens. Right. And, and you know, you're, you're going to have bad, <clears throat> bad apples in every group and every uh, demographic. There, there are plenty of dirty cops. Yeah. But, but what you're saying, and, I, and again, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you on this. We have to look at how we are all, all of us are being gamed by, by, these, by these globalists. How they're managing, well, mapping and managing the human domain, where we heard that before, um, <laughs> uh, as an aside. You know, this Tavistockian influence over our language, over what we say, over the... the, the this, this is not this, freedom. Our elite no. is allied with the most scumbag communist and radical Muslims you can imagine. They're bad people. We want a change <laughs> of management. It's our country, and you better back off New World Order. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Kristen in California. She says she's a poll worker on voting. Kristen, go ahead. Hi, Alex. I was a poll worker in the California June primary, and I estimate that 50 to 60 percent of voters voluntarily showed their ID when they came up to vote so we could look them up on the roster. We didn't ask and we couldn't by law, and people don't mind showing ID, and I am in the most liberal area of California you can imagine, and people still don't sure, mind what do you make ID. of Stanford Research Institute finding that Bernie Sanders was the winner and was defrauded. That's the Hill newspaper and um, even uh, Reuters. We certainly saw a lot more Bernie stickers out here and Bernie signage in California than Hillary stuff, I'll tell you that. Wow. Uh, other points you'd like to uh, make as a poll worker? I think it's important for people to go out there and volunteer. It's a long day, but it's worth it. And you get to see who comes in. You get to watch your neighbors. And you get to watch the poll workers, too. And also the poll watchers. A lot of liberal groups send in their people and demand to see their roster every hour we update. And they, you know, get real snarky about it. But we need to have conservative good people in there doing that work, too. It's good public service. It certainly is. Well, I've been a poll watcher myself. Uh, I've, been an, I've been an exit poller. I haven't done it in probably 18 years, but I'm I'm going to do it again this year. We're going to be here covering it live, and I, I intend to go out myself. I'm going to pick a precinct, and then Texas is not is, is key because it's probably, but they're even saying Texas is going to go Hillary, uh, Georgia, uh, Utah. Who believes any of this? I mean, these polls are completely backwards. Um, I think California is even in play for Trump, or do you think otherwise? What are you seeing, Kristen? Well, it seems to me that Californians can go for Hillary and that the Trump people are embarrassed and afraid to even pronounce it. There are no Trump signs around here. People are afraid that they're going to get vandalized. I wouldn't put one on my lawn. No way. You know, they'll trash my house. So that's been no happening. Tolerance. That's been happening. Yeah. I don't want to get involved in that. But, you know, Trump is the better of, of the two. Hillary, no way. Can't have it. Don't do it. A no vote is a Hillary vote. So people go vote Trump. Absolutely. People voting for Green Party or Gary Johnson. And I've been a big libertarian. I've been about building third parties. But I, I've been, I, I, I mean, I've interviewed Gary Johnson like 15 years ago. Different guy. And man, the times he's been around the last few times that asked, hey, you want Gary Johnson on? Even before he ran for president, I went, no, I don't want him on. Because he'd been here in studio. And I'm like, hey, man. He's just like, thank you, Alex. Go to a speak. And just like a robot. And I, I mean, I think Gary Johnson has gone over to the dark side. What do you think? What do you think about voting third party, Doug Hagman? No, you know, in a uh, in a perfect world, in a perfect society, well, even in a non-representative um, republic where there's no electoral college, yeah, maybe in a democracy, but we're not in a democracy. We're in, we're in a representative republic. The rules are different. So you're talking about viability, and I think that uh, any other vote outside of what we have been given, the the cards that we've been given to play, would be a mistake. So you either absolutely. Me, when you got two you know, bad candidates sometimes for president, uh, then right. you know, sure, go third party to build a third party. And I've helped build a Libertarian Party. I mean, I've really helped them. Now I see them just turned over like some kind of globalist organization. I, I'm really ashamed of the Libertarian Party right now, Doug. Oh yeah, I agree. I mean, it's just I've been mean, TPP, some unelected secret corporate thing. Oh, it's free market. No, it's not free market. Corporations can conquer you just as fast as government, Gary Johnson. Maybe I should get Gary Johnson on. I'll tear the living hell out of him. I mean, I am sick of him, man. He's there to make sure Hillary gets in. We're going to come back with more of your calls. Our reporters on the ground at Doug Hagman. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. I was like seven years old, and I was reading the Star Wars trilogy and one paperback that my dad, you know, had got episode four, five, and six. So I was reading adult science fiction and stuff when I was seven, eight years old. Really good reader. 
uh, wasn't good at spelling or math, but I've been a good reader. I mean, I was reading like a you know eighth grade level when I was about five, and I suddenly started reading history books, and they were just so entertaining. I remember being about ten years old. My mom's going, "You're reading Nietzsche? Do you understand that?" And I'm like, "Not really, but I'm into this." And then I read None Dare Call a Conspiracy, and I already had so much history when I was like 13 years old that everything clicked. And that little book tells you basically everything, how they run it, how the scam operates. It's like a 200-page version of uh, Tragedy and Hope that Quigley wrote from the position of the globalist that's 1,100 pages long. And so I grew up not having some victimhood, uh, it was just kind of like I knew there was a global government being formed in mega banks and that all this was being set up. And I had family that was in different secret of black ops and stuff, but that was just kind of like family that did something secret. I, I didn't really you know, know what they were doing, but then I knew that when I talked to them about stuff and I was like 13, 14, they'd be like, that's exactly right, kid. That's how it all works and that's who does it. And then I went to college and heard all this anti-American garbage all day and world government being pushed. And I was like, whoa, I've, wow, it's, it's happening. I forgot. I knew all this, but I'm living it now. I'm going to fight this. And by the time I was 20 years old, I had an Access TV show. By 21, I had a radio show. By 23, syndicated to over 20 stations at that time, close to 200 today. And what I want to say to new listeners or people or folks that make jokes at MSNBC you can sit there and choose sides, but at least be conscious about it. Don't lie to yourselves and say you're not signing on to an evil corporate world government because that's what this is. And I take it personal that a mega corporate world government's being set up that thinks of me as a slave. I'm not rolling over to it. And that's what Doug Hagman's standing up against. And that's what Ron Paul stands up against and Donald Trump and, 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 and Matt Drudge and all these other people. But we're just focal points of a larger global movement to want to have local control and self-determination. People say, oh, well, global government's just the next level, like Star Trek. You go from hunter-gatherers to agrarian to city-states to nation-states to empires to regional empires to global governance. But who runs the global governance? It's not like we phase into this over 100 years and it's democratically done. This is done by very anti-human people. I want to go to Jakari Jackson in Milwaukee to talk about this, but Doug Hagman finishing up, you're going to be riding shotgun with us. When did you start learning about the New World Order? You know, I, I was a late start, Alex, uh, unlike yourself. I, I, it took me quite a long time, in, well into my adulthood. I, I don't think I really, well, I don't think I believed, I'm, although I knew um, the what you were talking about, I, I knew about it. I, really, I don't think I really believed it until really right after 9-11. That's how late of a start I got. Um, at least I saw it happen. And, and I, I, I saw as we were investigating uh, through our network of investigators, <clears throat> the uh, Islamic terrorist websites and such, I saw we, we kept running into good guys. We kept running into the FBI and CIA agents in these chat rooms. And then it clicked and I thought, oh, wait a minute. We, when we can't tell who the good guys are from the bad, well, then we've got a problem. And everything that came, everything that, 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 that you had been talking about and everything that we'd learned or I'd learned uh, or read about, then I realized, okay, now we're being gamed and I realized how vast and how uh, epic this game is. So I'm, I'm, I'm a late upstart. Well, I don't blame people not, you know, wanting to think America still America, but, but this is corporate. This is a system we've not faced before. It's not a foreign country. It's, it's a globalist operation. And, and you think about, I have the article right here in my stack, how the communist party USA, admittedly, the local police chief is saying, uh, came in to the town, communist group members in Milwaukee to help revolution. And you look at how, you know, one cop shoots another cop, one black cop shoots another black cop. It's clearly not racial. Now some people are saying this cop might be dirty and had a bad background. Who knows? The point is, why does the media then give this all this attention? Why do we cover it? Well, we've got to cover what the media is going to do. It's literally just to divert attention away from the larger political uh, things that are unfolding. And Jakari Jackson is there on the ground in Milwaukee. Tonight they're going to cover a Trump rally in a nearby suburb. And, and uh, Jakari's been there since last night observing. Thank God things de-escalated last night. What are your observations, uh, Jakari? Because to me, so many times statistically, just like cops killing people is very low, 
I think overall the civil unrest, uh, if you compare it to the rest of the country, is pretty low. But the media hyping it and saying it's good, that's my concern. What do you think about what's happening? Well, since we got here last night, things have been very calm. Uh, we came last night. I didn't see any National Guard on the street, even though they are in the area prepared to be deployed if necessary. But thus far, if you look around right now, it's a lot of ATF. They're new. Uh, last night, it was mostly the, the sheriffs and the PD, but the ATF is now out here investigating the scene. And I actually, I uh, read ran across this interesting article, Art, uh, Alex, where they're talking about the ATF is offering a $10,000 reward for information for some of these fires that have been going on in the community. This is one of the more notable one, but there have been some other things that have been going on in the community as well. But right now, everybody's very calm. The, the people we've had a chance to speak to uh, since we've been here, they've been very positive. There are people from the community, they say, uh, they don't like this type of activity. Uh, many of the people were very encouraging. But we saw one man, we'll go put the report up earlier or later, where he said that he was trying to teach the kids how to drum or another lady. She was like, well, we have all these after school programs and summer programs to keep the kids out the streets. So there are people trying to do positive things here. But unfortunately, the uh, the violent minority gets the bulk of the media attention. Well, Gary Haven was here yesterday, Jakari, and he talked about the fact that when he was in Louisiana after the police shootings, that all he saw was basically black people uh, and also a few white folks or pink folks, whatever you call them, out there with signs saying, Jesus loves all the children, let's come together. No media attention to that. And I forgot that some of our reporters have been out in other areas of the country and seen the same thing. So again, there's a media agenda to really hype division here. Oh, yeah, because we go all around the country. A good example of that, what you're talking about right there, is when uh, the shooting happened in Charleston at the church. And we went out there, it's right in front of the church, the many people who were out there who weren't even necessarily religious or spiritual, they still were out there coming in community, uh, coming together with the community and also with the church and standing by the people in that area. You know, there are no no mass riots, none of the kind of stuff that we've seen here or places like Ferguson. I think the worst thing that happened while I was out there was a statue got spray painted. That was it. So, you know, it is possible for these things to come out to a peaceful solution. Sure. But for whatever reason, sometimes they do not. What do you make of the media's agenda then? Why do you think they're trying to stir this up? Well, I guess they were trying to stir it up until <laughs> they started getting targeted. Uh, but since oh, I've yeah, been some of like, the media got attacked up there, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, people uh, got rocks thrown through their windows and all kinds of stuff. And since then, I guess they've stopped hyping it quite a bit because actually we were flying in. We got in late last night and we were looking on our phones trying to find some news. We couldn't find any news. It was like everybody pulled out. Then we got here. It was just us and you know maybe one or two other guys out here covering the story. So they've really eased up on the way that they're covering it. And to the, a large extent, you know, things have cooled down. And you've seen the result of that. Now, since you got there, you may not have seen this, but you guys are great news hounds. Uh, more George Soros emails hacked. They're clearly behind the immigrant waves to destabilize Europe, the U.S. They admit the whole plan. This is a political operation. We already knew that, but wow. Uh, what else has to come out on George Soros, Shikari? Well, I think the problem is a lot of people don't understand that they're being manipulated, you know, because you're intellectual enough to understand this, but a lot of people don't. You know, they just hear, you know, the slogans or, you know, whatever it is that he does to entice them, you know, come out here and protest, get paid $50, whatever the fee is, and they go out and do that. They don't really understand the man that they're operating with. And then I think if more people understood that, they would be more apprehensive to side up with a guy like George Soros. I just can't believe there's a real live comic book character that's like worse than stuff I read in comic books. Yeah, he's not a good guy. <laughs> That's what I was making. If people understood who this guy is, you know, because they may have various issues in the community with you know this group or that group. But if they understood who that individual was, I think a lot of this stuff would cease uh, very quickly. And of course, you got the agitators, you got the communists who come down to various communities, try to stir stuff up. And they're always going to do that. But they wouldn't have as many people following them if they understood what exactly the agenda was. Sure, I've studied Joseph McCarthy pretty in depth. I mean, I'm not a super expert, but I probably read, let's not exaggerate, 10, 10 books or more about him from enemies and supporters. I've, I've, I've looked at the congressional record. The Soviets in the last 20 years, uh, you know, as that empire declined, have declassified a lot. Turns out he was right. A lot of elite foundations and things in the US and, and England and Europe, France, were funding the communists, so there was that back and forth deal. They were kind of using Russia to go invade countries that they couldn't convince uh, Europe or America to do. So so as soon as McCarthy figured that out, that's when they shut him down. When he wanted a police state to basically harass communists on the ground, uh, you know, the, the government was okay with that. But I got to tell you, uh, when communists say they want to overthrow our system and put us in forced labor camps, and they're, they're always the ones out pushing the violence, 
I, I mean, at a certain point, it's like the KKK. It's like, okay, you have a right to exist, but the minute you call for violence, I want you arrested. I mean, it's the same thing. But, but like, it seems like the communists just get away with whatever they want. And at a certain point, how long do we put up with, like, heirs still walking around, not in prison, uh, Jakari? I mean, I'm... Uh, when is a group a foreign agitating organization? I mean, Russia has banned Soros inside their country. I can find no fault with that. Do we just let these groups do anything? Is there any point at which these groups are no longer operating under the law, Jakari? Well, you know as well as I do, Alex, a lot of people come out here and agitate. Those are some of the most cowardly people that we see, whether it's uh, at the abortion rally we went to or other things that we experience. You know, it's again. Of, you know, skinny college kids who want to come out there and kick up stuff. And then when you stand up to them, they just run away and go hide back in the cave and crawl over trash cans in their skinny jeans. But the, the issue is that uh, they are so popular amongst, you know, whatever group of people who think that they're in the right. They feel very empowered to go out and do these things. Uh, and that's what the issue is. If they understood how ridiculous they are, and I think a lot of them will look back at those videos, you know, 10, 20 years from now and be quite embarrassed. But for the time being, they think that's the thing to do. And it's almost a, a social problem that they think that this is the way to help the country by burning No, it I agree with you. Uh, but I don't care if it's a right-wing group or a Klan group or a Hispanic group or a black group or a communist group or a whatever group. When you start, let me ask Hagman this and come back to Jakari. Doug, you know, you've, you've trained thousands of police officers, FBI, you know, with your intelligence network group. I, I mean, obviously, there's a point where it's fired. And, I, and I'm all for speech, uh, for free speech, 100%. But when you start organizing, if I organize, which I don't want to because it's not effective, I don't want to do it. If I started organizing the type of things I see communists doing or BLM doing or the George Soros white kids getting off the buses saying bang, bang, oink, oink, dead cops, deck the halls with dead cops. When you're there at an event calling for dead police, you're not in free speech. You're organizing an event. If police were running around chanting, let's kill citizens, I'd say arrest their ass, you know. I, I mean, there's a certain point where the left is allowed to do things nobody else is. And again, I'm not mad like, I want to organize violence. Why can't I? I don't want to organize it. But I watch them doing things that is calls to action, organizing violence. They have a name for it. It's racketeering, isn't it? Well, uh, of course. I mean, on a federal level, you've got the uh, the, the crimes code, uh, the, uh, the state level too, and, and the local level. You're seeing this being violated, flagrantly violated by these groups. Whereas if you and I did this, it would be, we wouldn't even get off the ground. We wouldn't even get out of the planning If state. I called for this stuff in one hour, the, the police would be here. Right, exactly. So, so, and this is, I mean, certainly this is how we see and how we can identify the, uh, the, uh, uh, infiltrated. And we can see the Justice Department is protecting it. Of course, of course. You, right, right. So, I mean, this seditious activity that violates you know, the federal, state, local laws uh, that can be stopped isn't stopped. And I guess that you get the is word. What, it is sedition. It very, yeah. Traitors, sedition, whatever. Uh, absolutely. Because you're you're talking about overthrowing the government. You're talking about uh, the mur mass, you know, murdering. Of, of innocent people. You're talking about conspiracy, the, the actual act of conspiracy uh, with others to, to engage in seditious acts. So all of this, yeah, I mean, th this is pretty clear. It's pretty, it's pretty basic uh, what we're seeing. We're here. facing foreign multinational billionaires engaging in fomenting seditious rebellion and overthrow of our country, just like Soros has done in, in, in dozens of countries. I cannot believe he's allowed to operate. Jakari Jackson, I keep going back to Soros, and he's emblematic. He's only one of these kingpins. Carlos Slim, with all of his weird corruption and all the corporate welfare he gets, richest man in the world, runs Mexico. He owns the New York Times. He's pushing gun control here in America. People go, what, are you against him because he's a Mexican? He's not even a Mexican. He's Lebanese. I'm not against Lebanese either. The point is, he's a parasite. He wants my guns. And what is he doing in my country being the number two financer of gun control after Michael Bloomberg. I'm fundamentally pissed, Jakari. Well, absolutely. People don't like this. I think we see more and more people waking up to this. Actually, a video that we're going to post here in a little bit. Well, actually, I don't know if we said this on camera. We were talking to a lady a little bit ago, and uh, she may have said this after we got off, off camera, but she was saying that you guys need to be prepared. She's like, what are you guys doing to get prepared? And Big said, like, we got we got food, we got bullets, and <laughs> we, got, we got water. And then she gave us a high five. And it's just a, a normal lady here in the community. She doesn't... You know, she's not an extremist or anything else, but she understands that you need to have a means to defend yourself and also a means to uh, provide for yourself. I was about to say, there's a total distortion 
along so-called race lines. When it is true, we're all one race. We all got red blood, all the same genetics. At the end of the day, our differences is less than one-tenth of one percent. It's all cosmetic in the spectrum of humanity. But when you look at this, the average person just wants freedom and just wants to have a future. And that's what's so sad and what makes me so angry is that our enemies play us off against each other because it's the only way they can win, Jakar. Yeah, that's what they do, divide and conquer. That's their best strategy. If they, they understand that people unify and they understand that people can put aside these petty issues like they did in places like Charleston, uh, they won't have these big riots. And, not, uh, the and notice they shut in. the media down once it showed whites, blacks, Hispanics all hugging at prayer vigils and coming together. As soon as that happened, they just shut that coverage down. <laughs> they said, well, that's not what we came here to see. Like I said, they don't want to see the people, thousands of people across the bridge out there in Charleston hugging, uh, singing songs and all that. And I think if uh, more th those things could happen and get the good publicity, then uh, a lot of these things would stop. Absolutely, uh, Jakari. Uh, well, thank you. We're going to come back and do one segment with Rob Dew, with Mr. Hagman as well. Uh, so we're going to get the news director's take on what he's been witnessing uh, and, and, and more straight ahead. I have not plugged this out. I want to take some phone calls here with a little bit of the next hour with our guest. Hagman at Hagman.com. Check out his own radio and TV show. It's excellent. Uh, just amazing information. Very humble man, Doug Hagman. Smart guy, a lot of great sources. Paul Watson taking over in about 15 minutes from London. But let's go uh, to real quick to the news director, who's also running camera, uh, Rob Dew. What is your takeaway from what you're seeing happening there in Milwaukee? The Trump event coming up tonight. We're going to have live coverage during the nightly news, 7 o'clock uh, Central. Uh, Rob Dew. Well, Alex, I just want to uh, make a point here of what you were talking about earlier, how the media wants to see death and destruction and exploit that. Jakari, turn the camera over here. You got three mainstream media cameras, and they're all pointed at the burnt out building. Now, we did shoot some footage of that earlier, but all of them are pointed over there. We're over here. Our backdrop is people having picnics, getting along, coming out here, uh, trying Rob to Rob, dude, this is a first. How delicious is that toothpick in your mouth right now? Uh, the toothpick? I'm not even mad. I just love how laid back you are with a toothpick in your mouth. Go ahead. I don't have a toothpick in my mouth, but that's all right. You do, do have, have a toothpick. I see it. But if you want to make point, a point of it, I'll, I'll get real up close. This is sunburn from my Oh, lab. my gosh. I apologize. It was uh, a distortion. A I'm not I mad at you. I love the fact you have a toothpick. It's I think big. I'm going to start broadcasting with a toothpick. Sorry. Big. Yeah, I've been dealing with it all day. Or for the last three days. I that's apologize. All right. I'm, I, 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 I was not bitching morning. at you. I thought it was funny. <laughs> no, no. I'm just... I just wanted to show you. Hey, I look toothpick. like Bob's big boy. Hey, does it not look like a toothpick at a distance? <laughs> I, I what I'm trying to do is hide it, like this. It's okay. It looks tasty, actually. So, is it anyway, caramel flavored? You got people out here, uh, Alex, selling water. Uh, you got a group out here drumming, trying to raise money uh, for their group to go out and perform. To, this guy's one man army is trying to take take kids off the street, teach them a skill. You know, he was a high school drummer. He's like, I'm going to take kids off the street. He I love this. So all these people that want to help and stop this are coming to bring joy. Right. And, and exactly. And so maybe it takes an event like this to wake people up and get break people out of their trance. Sometimes you need events like this. And but but I just think it's very interesting how the mainstream media is all focused on the building being torn down and, you know, not talking to the, the regular people out here. It's just my uh, observation uh, from the people we met last night uh, to today. All of them had. Uh, a biblical message to add to what they were saying. And I think that's pretty important that we have to like start looking at God and his message and what's in the Bible to, uh, to find guidance and direction in these things. Cause people are running around without guidance and direction. And this is what you get when you don't have guidance and direction. And a lot of people are, are saying it's the adult's responsibility to take control of the kids to make sure, you know, they're Absolutely. not sitting I like what Sheriff Clark said about all this, you know, this. we can deal with the police later, but how about dealing with the ghetto problem? Because, you know, that's an issue, and the poverty's getting worse for everybody. Uh, it's a very sad situation. Well, you're going to be there tonight. Tell folks uh, where this is taking place with Trump. Yeah, it's going to be at West Bend. I don't have the exact address in front of me, but we're going to be there. We're actually going to leave here in about 15 minutes and head up that way. we got some videos to upload, some stuff to put together. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to see if there's any uh, rollover from this. Maybe the operatives have come in, and they're just waiting to spring on Trump because last night it was pretty quiet here. The police had this place locked down. We went to another location that they were going to be at. And it's going to be in West Bend at the Ziegler building in Washington County at, at the Fair Park and Conference Center. That's about 45 so minutes away. West Bend, Wisconsin starts at 7.30 tonight. We're going to be there in uh, less than two hours. So we want to see all the people out there, hopefully nice positive uh, event. But if there's uh, agitators out there, we will get them on film and we will expose them. Well, like we do, do you are awesome. And I meant it lighthearted about the toothpick. I didn't realize you, right. you had a, a, a big sunburn <laughs> spot. 
So I put my <laughs> mouth, my foot in my own mouth. Uh, great <laughs> job, you and the crew. All right. Rob, you're reporting from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin for Infowars.com. All right. All right. All right, we're going to come back in 70 seconds, take a few calls, get final comments from Mr. Hagman, uh, and then uh, we're going to hand the baton to Paul Josephine Watson. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson while I'm having some fun. You know I love the crew. We all just joke with each other behind the scenes. Uh, Infowars.com, the new order. Don't want that website out, folks. We are teleprompter free. Remember that. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Just come on every few months. Just somebody, I want to get uh, James Wesley Rawls on. All these great people we don't get on often enough. Uh, but I want to go to your phone calls, too. Anna and Josephine and Jason and Dan and Carlos. I'll get to all of you before I hand the baton to Paul Joseph Watson. Uh, but uh, any other tidbits you want to add uh, as we take a few calls here? Uh, just that you're right on. You know, it's, it's interesting, the, the, uh, um, the appearance in Wisconsin, what you showed versus what the mainstream media is focusing on. I, I think we need more of that, and we need to, to understand, too. And, and this is where uh, I, myself, as a Christian, and, and uh, to my Christian audience, we need to fill in the gap. We need to have a presence because, again, failure to act on our part, we have a responsibility to to really um, to stand in the gap and, and, and to be a force multiplier for the good as opposed to allowing the bad to run roughshod over us, whether it be the uh, in, alien invasion from ISIS or, or, or the globalist uh, tyranny or whatever it might be. But I, th I think uh, the dynamic that, that you showed, the... the, uh, um, the People that's coming together, you wouldn't see that on yeah. mainstream media. Exactly. And the other thing you said, too, about McCarthy, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big... Uh, uh, history, history buff about McCarthy. I think people would be surprised to learn just very quickly that even into the 1990s, much of McCarthy's findings from the National Archives uh, were being expunged by the uh, people who are in power right now, the globalists. And, and I would urge people to really understand the infiltration that we suffered post World War II by the communists and even the Democratic National Socialists into this into into America, and how that's playing out today. So thank you for for allowing me to say that. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk to Anna in Kentucky. You're on the air with Doug Hagman. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Thanks for what you do. Um, <clears throat> my question is: since Soros and the big banks have so much control over the government. How is there any possible way that Trump can even win this election? If we all just wake up and know they're the enemy and spread the word to people and, and don't just debate them, at la you'll go, look, you're being conned. You know, Trump is the anti-globalist. Enough people will vote for a landslide. But Trump wins just by injecting real issues. Even if he loses, the, the, the globalists are in trouble. Their whole agenda is being exposed. True. Um, and my son wants me to ask you, he... He is actually the one that has introduced you to us, um, and we um, we were just kind of leading blindly, you know, in this world, um, and until this past election, um, he is wondering if, you, in your opinion, do you think Hillary Clinton had to bow to Mullock to get to be the candidate for the Democratic Party? Are you saying, do I think she's too ill to be that? No, if she bowed to Moloch. Um, well, I mean, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that Hillary Clinton is in the occult. I, I've read books about it, seen photos. I mean, I've, I've covered what she does. And most of these elites, and I, and I didn't believe this 20 years ago. I got into this and just did, did research. Most of them are into the occult. They're obsessed with the occult. And there's no doubt Hillary Clinton is an extremely wicked woman. God bless you. And God bless your son, Anna. Uh, in, in your own research, uh, Doug, I've never asked you this question. Have you run into the occult when, when, when researching the globalist? Oh, yeah, absolutely, Alex. And, and you're right on the money with this. People won't believe it. I didn't believe it. But absolutely, that there is a level. Uh, well, the Luciferian elite. And if anyone has any doubt, rules for radicals dedicated to Lucifer, come on. That's Hillary's Trust. Bible is absolutely. dedicated to Lucifer. Right. So, so I mean, it's, it's everywhere. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, pretty and, yeah. soon when it's Lucifer this, Lucifer that, you're like ignoring it. It's just all around you. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, Doug, thank you so much. I'd love to come on your program anytime, you and your hey. whole team. No, no, I know you're a busy guy and you've invited me before and haven't, but I'd love to come on. Your work is so important. Thank you so much for all you do.
God bless you, Alex. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. No, we appreciate you. you have a lot of courage, my friend. All right, we're going to come back and hand the baton to Paul Watson after a few calls. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Info War. Humanity's desperate attempt to